Is it worth paying more money for an RTX 3070 gaming laptop, or should you save the cash and get a cheaper RTX 3060? I've compared both in 17 games at two resolutions to find out. Here are the differences in specs between these two laptop GPUs. The higher tier RTX 3070 has 33% more CUDA cores, 33% more VRAM, and the memory is faster too, though the max boost clock on the 3060 is higher. The 3070 has a higher possible maximum power limit, but this will vary between laptops. To do this testing, I'm using my Lenovo Legion 5 for the RTX 3060 and the XMG Neo 15 for the RTX 3070. Both laptops have an 8-core Ryzen 7 5800H processor, a MUX switch to disable Optimus to get best performance, and most importantly, they both run their GPUs at the maximum power limit specified by Nvidia, with 15 watts extra due to dynamic boost. I've also tested both with the exact same physical kit of memory installed, 16 gigs of DDR4 3200CL22 X8 memory and dual channel. There might be some small differences differences between these two laptops due to things like CPU power limit and laptop cooling solution. But we're focusing on higher setting presets in games which are generally more GPU bound to help mitigate this. Plus 1440p has been tested too which is more GPU heavy compared to 1080p. So let's compare those 17 games at two different resolutions. Then afterwards we'll check out pricing and availability, power draw, and content creator workloads. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested in the same part of the game on both laptops. I've got the 1080p results below and 1440p results above with the lower tier RTX 3060 below and higher tier RTX 3070 on top. This game saw one of the smallest differences out of all 17 titles tested. Not a great start for the more expensive 3070, which was reaching 10% higher average FPS at 1080p, and just 8% higher at 1440p. Granted, this was the smallest difference at this resolution. This game also offers DLSS support, and as both are RTX GPUs, they can both take advantage of this feature to get a performance boost. The 3070 now has a slightly larger 12% lead over the 3060 at 1440p, but strangely the 3060 system was ahead in 1% lows at 1080p, something that we'll see in more upcoming games but only with DLSS enabled. Watch Dogs Legion is on the other end of the spectrum and has the biggest difference out of all 17 games tested. Even the 1% lows from the 3070 are ahead of the average FPS the 3060 laptop is able to produce. The 3070 was reaching 52% higher average FPS at 1080p, while it was a massive 71% higher at 1440p. This game's benchmark was warning that 6 gigs of VRAM wasn't enough at maximum settings. The 8 gigs on the 3070 was barely enough, so that seems to be why the difference is so big. This game also offers DLSS support, so we can get a further performance boost by turning it on. At 1080p, the 3060's average FPS was at least no longer behind the 3070's 1% low, but the gap is otherwise still quite large. Red Dead Redemption 2 on the other hand had much smaller differences which were more in line with the 17 game average. At 1080p, the 3070 was around 17% faster in in terms of average FPS, and then this increases to about 20% at the higher 1440p resolution. This game recently added DLSS support, and both machines were able to get a similar performance increase by turning this on. I've compared control with ray tracing and DLSS, but let's start off with neither, so just stock standard gameplay. This game is typically quite GPU heavy, though at 1080p the 3070 was just 17% ahead of the 3060, an above average result but not by much. The difference is much larger at the higher 1440p resolution though with the 3070 now 45% ahead. The second biggest difference at this resolution only behind Watch Dogs Legion, possibly due to the extra VRAM. This game gets a massive performance increase by turning on DLSS. At 1440p, the 3060 is now 107% higher than itself with DLSS off, while the 3070 was 62% higher than itself with DLSS off. So clearly a much larger improvement for the 3060. DLSS allows it to close the gap, but the 3070 was still 14% faster than the 3060 here. I've also tested both both with ray tracing on, and while enabling DLSS would of course increase performance here, I wanted to see the differences in just straight up ray tracing. At 1440p, the 3070 was 54% ahead of the 3060, so a bigger gap compared to the 45% difference noted at stock, which seems to confirm the 3070 is a fair bit better at tracing those rays. Call of Duty Warzone on the other hand had below average differences compared to other games. The 3070 was 11% faster than the 3060 at 1080p in terms of average FPS, and then 15% faster at the higher 1440p resolution. This game also offers DLSS support, and it seems to clear
close the gap between the 3060 and 3070. At 1080p, the 3070 is now just 4% higher in terms of average FPS. And the 1% low looks about the same on the graph, but was technically 1 FPS higher. And while I'd say that's margin of error, it matches what we saw in some of the other games when enabling DLSS. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was an above average result for the 3070, but that's not to say the 3060 was running the game poorly or anything. I've spent over 100 hours in this game now, and I don't think you need a super high frame rate to enjoy it. That said, the 3070 was reaching 18% higher average FPS compared to the 3060 at 1080p, and then 19% higher at 1440p. The differences in Microsoft Flight Simulator were below average. The 3070 was just 9% higher than the 3060 in average FPS, though the 1% lows were about the same on both, and then 17% higher at 1440p. As an esports title, you could argue that higher frame rate is more important in Fortnite compared to most other games that I've covered. At 1080p, the 3070 was reaching 18% higher average FPS compared to the 3060, then 19% higher at 1440p. Like most other games, the 3060 is still offering decent performance considering we're at max settings here. It's not as if it's unplayable, the 3070 is just better. This is another game with DLSS support, so the 3060 can surpass 100 FPS even for the 1% low now, even at 1440p max settings with this simple change, though the 3070 was around 15% faster when comparing average frame rate. F1 2021 was tested with the highest setting preset, which enables some ray tracing effects by default, as denoted at the top of the graph. Despite the additional RT cores in the 3070, we're looking at fairly average differences here, with the 3070 15% ahead of the 3060 at 1080p, and 17% ahead at 1440p. Instead of talking through the rest of the 8 games individually in depth, I'll just blast through them so we can get into the average differences, as that's more interesting, even if all of this testing did take many hours to complete. A larger selection of games is important to help get a better rounded average. Feel free to pause the video if you want a closer look at these additional games. On average, over all 17 games tested at 1080p, the RTX 3070 laptop was reaching 16% higher average FPS compared to the 3060 laptop. The 3070 was ahead in all games, as expected, but the margins could vary significantly depending on the game. There was basically no practical difference seen in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, while Watch Dogs Legion at the top has huge improvements with the extra VRAM in the 3070. Stepping up to the higher 1440p resolution, the 3070 pulls further ahead with a 21% average improvement now. Many gaming laptops with these two GPUs are starting to feature 1440p screens now, so the differences here might be more relevant to you depending on the screen configuration you're looking at, or if you plan on using an external monitor. Worst case, Cyberpunk was just 8% higher with the 3070, but then again Watch Dogs and Control are basically outliers here. For the most part, I think the 6 gigs of VRAM in the RTX 3060 is enough in most modern games even at the higher 1440p resolution. But that said, I think some of those outlier games could be giving us a bit of a preview of what to expect a few years from now if we had the extra VRAM, as games will continue to get more demanding over time. Just before we get into the price differences, I've got to compare both GPUs and some content creator workloads. It's not all just about gaming. The 3070 completed the longer classroom test in Blender 54% faster than the 3060, and the shorter BMW test 38% faster. This is a CUDA test, so I'd expect the CUDA core difference to matter more here. V-Ray was also much better with the 3070, scoring 58% higher in the CUDA test. I've also run the ray tracing test, which was 35% higher on the 3070, which makes sense considering the 3070 has 33% more RT cores, though we didn't see anywhere near that much of a difference in the games with RT. SpecViewPerf tests out various professional 3D workloads, and the 3070, shown by the purple bars, was ahead in all of these tests, though the margins could vary a fair bit depending on the specific test. I've compared the total system power draw from the wall with both laptops running control at 4K max settings with an external screen. The 3070 machine was drawing about 42% more power, though in this game at 1440p it was also offering a 45% boost to average frame rate. Given control was more of an outlier in the FPS tests, I'd expect most other games to require more power compared to their FPS improvements on the 3070. Great, so the RTX 3070 laptop outperforms the 3060 laptop, surprising no one. But how much more expensive is the 3070, and is it worth it? Prices of both will of course change over time, so refer to those links in the description below for updates. At the time of recording, the Lenovo Legion 5 is available with RTX 3060 graphics for $1,555, US dollars, though I have seen it on sale for closer to $1,400, so keep an eye out on those links for sales. Lenovo wants $240 more to upgrade to the 3070, which is about 15% more money in this case, but this will be less in terms of a percentage if you're buying a more expensive model. This doesn't sound too bad, 15% more money for 15% more performance in games at 1080p, kinda adds up. If you want the 
extra 15% performance then pay 15% more money. Not great, not terrible. Now that said, for a machine that you're probably going to use for 3 plus years, I think it might make more sense just to get the 3070 if you can afford it. And that is mainly because you get the extra 2 gigs of VRAM. But as we've seen, the 3060 laptop still holds up incredibly well today. I'm a little concerned to see if it's 6 gigs of VRAM starts to be a limit in 2, 3, 4, 5 years, I don't know. I've got no way of seeing the future. Maybe by the time the 6 gigs of VRAM starts being a limit, you'd be looking for a laptop upgrade anyway. I don't know, it's hard to predict, but basically I don't think the 3060 is going anywhere anytime soon. But if you are getting a laptop that has a high resolution screen, I'd probably just go the 3070 just in case. Again, you get a similar performance boost for the amount of money spent, at least in the examples featured in this video. Check out these videos next if you want to see how the RTX 3060 and 3070 compare against older laptop GPUs. Maybe you can save some money getting a last gen option. Make sure you're subscribed for future laptop comparisons like this one, and come and join me in Discord and get behind the scenes videos by supporting the channel on Patreon.